Westminster College, located in Salt Lake City, Utah, is a center of learning and cherished alma mater to thousands of professionals across the world. Founded in 1875, Westminster's purpose has been clear and direct since its conception, to prepare students to lead lives of learning, accomplishment, and service in a diverse and interdependent world. The Gore School of Business, located at the heart of campus, has seen its alumni go on to great and manifold heights throughout the global economy with a mission to prepare people who think critically, act responsibly, and make a difference, Gorse sees its students go on to change the world. The following is a series of interviews featuring recent and near-term graduates of Westminster College's Bill and Vive Gore School of Business, hosted by Professor Richard Haskell, PhD. So, uh, so Bailey, thanks for joining me today. I'm here with uh, Bailey Prince, and, and Bailey's actually from Utah, uh, and he's uh, been working with us here in the Center for Financial Wellness for the last year, uh, and uh, is uh, is part of the Gore School of Business. Bailey, thanks for joining me today. Of course, thank you. So you and I have worked together for a while now, haven't we? Yes, we have. In fact, I think that it's been a little over three years now, or we're coming right up at three years. Yep. And uh, I think I met you as a freshman in our Business 101 class, and at the time, um, you weren't 100% sure finance, accounting, business, hike, you know, what you were gonna do. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be in business because of my grandfather and my fathers before that were all in business and finance, but I had no idea. So it was a broad spectrum of accounting and finance in my family, and I knew I loved the field. But I honestly had no idea if I wanted to do that or I just wanted to be a marketing major. I had no yeah. idea, but um, kind of sat down with you and learned a lot and figured this was the best way to go. And I also picked up an accounting major while I was still here. Yeah. So got a little bit of both worlds here. So Well, and, and, and accounting, uh, I, which I think is a lot of where your heart's been, right? I mean, For the I mentioned you like accounting, you like accounting today. But I think the only really influence that I might have provided was to help you see how closely connected accounting and finance are. Extremely. And, and in fact, they are, if you've learned one, you've learned a tremendous amount about the other. Extremely. And, and I dig that. And let's be honest, they're both just applied economics. Can we just agree on <laughs> we that? We can agree on that. Okay. They're just applied economics. So where's home? Home is Twilly, Utah. So about 30 minutes, 35 minutes away from campus. So just uh, due west of here, right? Due west, yeah. Out towards the out towards the desert? Out into the desert, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, your family's been there a long time. Uh, you want to go back there? Or, you know, what you um, My family's lived there for about two generations. Um, my great great grandma came back from when the set, the, well, we came through when the settlers came in, the Mormon settlers and they um, settled down in Price, Utah, and then they slowly, once the military facilities came in to Twila, Utah, is when we kind of, my family migrated to Twila. So a large military background with my mom's side of the family, so that's where I kind of come from. And then my dad's side came from California, so we kind of just convened at the Army Depot out uh, there yeah. is where a lot of my family met. <laughs> well, for those people that, uh, that might be watching this that don't know, there's a lot of military presence out in that valley that Tooele is part of, and then as you go north on up into Ogden and yep. Hill Air Force. Extremely kind of military oriented. So, um, so why business and why the numeric side of it? I mean, wh why not one of the uh, one of the more qualitative sides of business, or why why not something else outside of business? Well, when I was little, so um, I live with my parents, so I didn't learn to read until I was in sixth grade. The only thing I really knew was numbers. I could do math easily, like I was best of my class in math all through elementary school, but I didn't know how to read, believe it or not. I had no idea. I, yep, so I didn't know how to read until I was in about sixth, seventh grade, and I knew how to do math really well. So my first language was honestly math and the number side of things. So it's pretty much my first language is doing numbers. So that's a large reason of why I'm not an English major. Okay, fair <laughs> but um, uh, as for why finance or accounting, um, there's a picture of my great great grandfather. Um, he was a CFO of the NASA facility in um, there's this black and white picture of him at a desk, and I remember I just look back to that 
picture and just being fond of seeing him at that desk. And ever since then, I've just kind of wanted to either be him or something like that. And that's kind of what, in the back of my mind, I just picture of, I want to get to the point where I have that sort of like ideal like presence around. Yeah, that's impressive. I didn't know that. You ought, to, you ought to get a copy of that picture, frame it, and have it in any office that you have. I do. I have it in my house right now, Good and I you. see it every single day. Good for you. <laughs> no, I love that. So, um, so finance, accounting, uh, but why Westminster? I mean, here we, you have all kinds of choices of schools, both in the region, nationally, big, small. What caused you to come to Westminster? Um, so mostly because not only was it because I have very, um, I'm not wealthily backed by my family, so I come from a very poor side of the family. So I honestly had a great spectrum of where I wanted to go based on my academics from high school mm -hmm. as well as ACT. So I had a very wide option of like an array of options to go to college, but I didn't want to move so far away from home that I couldn't see my family. So a large part of living in Utah is honestly getting to know a large majority of family because I honestly knew my great great grandma which a lot of people don't have yeah. that so um, we have a big family um, I honestly don't have full-blooded family but I have very close and um, well I have full-blooded brothers and sisters and scattered amongst but um, we're very close with my family so I didn't want to move too far away and then this was the best option for me because the business program here, as well as the small class sizes, um, I had previous um, work with the University of Utah, USU, and the class sizes were just massive. I took a couple of these um, general classes that had 400 students in them, and I was just a small pawn in the great ocean of people there. So, you know, those are great schools. I Extremely. Mean, let, let's face it. Uh, but, but there is something about the, the beauty of being small, and it, it doesn't hurt that we have a drop dead beautiful campus. Oh, well, yeah, right? that was also, this was actually the first college I toured. My aunt Seriously. went here. Yep, my aunt went here in 2009 for accounting. And, um, yeah, that was mostly the reason I came here also is because I had my aunt went here. But um, as for deciding on here, it was mostly because of the small class sizes and the personal, the like interpersonal um, relationships that you can gain from the professors. I mean, you and me have talked many, many hours, many hours and also professors all over. I'm continuously talking to and even freshman year. Um, learning community, um, Mike Nee, I still talk to him regularly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so so you, you reflect back on that experience. You've had a lot of experiences in the interim. This coming year is going to be relatively intense for you. It's going to be your senior year. Yep. Uh, and you'll graduate, what, in uh, May or, or, or April of yep. 23, right? Yep. So to this point, What's been the most transformative experience you've had? Or what are you going to look back at and say, that made a difference to me? Um, I'd definitely say that um, any course that had to do with just management in general, um, learning how to deal with people, because there's two things in business, and it's people and people. Okay. So you have your customers and you have your employees, and it's kind of juggling that and figuring out what that is exactly and learning how to manage that as well as other things in business, whether that be your role or other like things going on. But I think learning how to actually deal with people and time management and that has really like given me the gas to get things done, especially coming into this year. Well, that's interesting because as a, from a numbers guy, I would have almost expected you to have given a, some quantitative example or some quantitative oriented experience. But the reality is, if numbers were your first language, then numbers are what you already knew. People and dealing with them is, is what you needed to pick up that you weren't already natural or comfortable with. Is that right? Yeah. So if you don't remember correctly in Business 101, I sat in I do. the far corner and didn't talk to anybody. I do. <laughs> And that would be a reason why. Yeah. <laughs> so um, why did you choose the business school here? And what is important about the business school here to you? To 
for me to be here, it's honestly the professors here that help okay. me understand the material and work with me. Either that's on an individual basis because I have lots of questions. You do. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. And I think with that in mind, um, I think it's the professors that really here at Westminster in the business school precisely why I'm in this school of business is because I have that interaction here okay. and that kind of helps me get through whatever whatever it is. Well, that's fair. So um, a year from now, you graduate. Yep. What are you hoping happens next? Um, I'm hoping to get into either private equity or work with uh, some accounting firm. Um, I have a double degree, so I can yeah. kind of go two directions. So that helps a lot with being um, having that kind of an option. But um, I think it's wherever I can get into the door, or not exactly wherever I can get into the door, but gauging my options, because I have a broad idea of where I want to go, but I also have two degrees to work with. So, so earning both degrees, being a double major, have you then had to uh, prolong your experience here? Uh, did you have to be, do you have to be here for five years or are you able to get that done in the same four year footprint that you could have done one degree? Um, I've honestly had enough time to do both in the four years. Um, I probably could have gotten done in December this year, but instead of doing that, I took a couple leisurely semesters, not leisurely, I mean 16 credit hours is not leisurely oh, for the most oh, part. Please. But right. um, a couple of extra classes that kind of helped me just get things done earlier and then being able to cut back this semester and next semester only taking 14. So it's been kind of You're interesting. Cutting back to 14. Cutting back to 14. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we're in, in an age in which a lot of students think 12 credit hours is full time. Many students would think that's a step up, but good for you. I'm taking on a lot. You're the <laughs> Got man. To. So your higher education experience is happening at a time of tremendous technological advancement in, and I intensity. Yep. Uh, we, we have been coming through a pandemic that sped up the pace of technological integration, uh, but let's face it, it was fast anyway, and, and it's not gonna slow down. Tell me about the, the effect that technology and that rapid expansion is, you think is happening on your, either your experience here or your expected career. I think that the advancement is going to make it interesting to get hired because a lot of the first screening interviews that will happen once I get out of college are going to be just me looking at myself on a screen. Yep. And um, I think Westminster has prepared me for that uh, through interview courses, I mean, not interview courses, but internship courses, kind of starting me on the idea that this is very real reality that we're living in and that preparing for that first interview isn't necessarily different now. It's very much the same, but it's just you looking at yourself and that alone is very different. And then also, the workplace is going to be extremely different. I think that COVID alone has made it so that working from not only from coast to coast, I mean, you can be in Washington and working in San Diego, but um, not only that, but globally as well. I mean, the language gap might be there, but you could work from Hong Kong. But um, I think a lot of it is going to be um, learning how to deal with the virtual side of things again? Yeah, I, t I tend to agree with you. Uh, I think that we don't even really understand some of the dynamic. We're in this space where things have sped up so fast uh, and we expected them to speed up, but we didn't expect a pandemic to motivate it. No, we did not. They've sped up so fast that I think our ability to really consider how that affects the workplace, the worker and the trajectory of their careers I don't think we know what that is yet. I don't think so either. That'll benefit you because you can be at the at the forefront of that. Well, look, uh, you and I have gotten to know each other pretty well over the last few years. Yes, we have. And we have a great year in front of us as well. Uh, you handle a lot of responsibilities here. Uh, you're involved in the Center for Financial Wellness, but kind of give me a sense of the things that you're working on and what you expect to continue to work on as you finish out your year here. Okay. so. As you know, I am working for the Financial Wellness Center. I work with the Business Certificate Series. Uh, we're currently finishing-ish 
the business certificate yeah, I'm series. I'm not sure it'll ever be done, by the way. Uh, I, it's, I, I, uh, we've a had hope. a couple of deadlines, but we've surpassed them, but we are backbreaking working on it. There you go. But um, as for the business certificate series, we're currently working on a lot of modules and different things, working on forecasting, things that really kind of pertain to finance currently is what I'm working on. And then other duties that I work on as well is I am the coordinator for ICAP co-op. Well, now it's called co-op. Um, so currently I'm helping um, teach QuickBooks online as well as financial statements to about nine to 11 other um, members of our team. And that's been very interesting. Um, I think being on the other side of the teaching learning has really like opened my eyes to kind of gauge how much I really know and how to kind of slow back and help others catch up. So that's been a juggle for the last couple, three weeks. So learning how to do that has been an obstacle alone. And then trying to learn how to create a lessons pl lesson plan has been another um, ordeal. Um, uh, I can walk through material very fast, but uh, people can't understand and retain it as fast as I want to teach it. So learning how to do that and gain like experience with that has been interesting. And I'm also working for um, Westminster ASW or as the uh, director of budgeting and accounting. So I have a other roles well here at the college and I do a lot of work with the student body. Well, and this last semester, you also did a lot in the business tutoring center, didn't you? Yes, I did. So uh, Center for Financial Wellness, uh, you work in the CFA, uh, which is where we do the business tutoring at this point. Uh, you are a coordinator for the co-op program, formerly the ICAP program, which is a Salt Lake County program, right? Yep. That we have a grant to provide services to small businesses in the area that are either uh, cater to minority populations or are owned by underrepresented households, serve underrepresented low-income households. So there's a lot that we do there. Uh, and uh, you've got your hands in this business the certificate series uh, so and you're stepping up to 14 credit hours how do you do all of those things I also work for Russell Deacon on the thank part time you. thank you <laughs> so Russell Deacon he owns the Oceana group yep and uh, you have had some internship experience there but that's an example of this technological issue right yep because where is Russell domiciled uh, Miami Florida on a three-bedroom penthouse suite. <laughs> in fact, Russell, let's be honest, is domiciled wherever he darn well wants to be, right? Right now he's in London. Yeah, and so <laughs> you're working for him here. He's got something going on in Florida. He's in London. Uh, every once in a while I catch up with him with Buenos Aires, if I remember correctly. Yep. Uh, and that's just an example, right? Yep. How well, we're able to connect through that, yep. Yeah. Well, look, you've become a good friend over the last few years, and, and you got a lot in front of you as well. Thanks for spending your time with me today. Of course. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you later. You